The Deeper Pro Plus smartphone fish finder is different from the last model I reviewed. The Pro and the Pro Plus models communicate with your phone or tablet through Wi-Fi instead of Bluetooth. Now, that doesn't mean you need to be in an area with Wi-Fi service, or even cell service for that matter, because the Deeper and your phone both have all the hardware necessary to send and receive signals directly to one another. This video will be focused just on ice fishing. I've used this for kayak and shore fishing as well, but I'll save that for another video. The app, which displays your readout, can be updated as time goes on, but the hardware built into the Deeper Pro Plus itself, being the battery, the GPS, and the Wi-Fi, doesn't change. Let's start with the speed of transmission. One of the benefits of Wi-Fi over Bluetooth is that there should be less lag, which is very important for vertical fishing. When I tested the original Deeper with Bluetooth, I roughly measured that the signal delay was half of a second. Using the same test going frame by frame in video, the signal delay with the Pro Plus appears to be three tenths of a second. Definitely a welcomed improvement for hard water anglers. The other advantage of Wi-Fi over Bluetooth is that you about double the distance you can be away from your sonar and still read a signal, and you double the depth that you can fish in. The Pro Plus has a max depth of 260 feet or 80 meters and a max signal range of 330 feet or 100 meters. I don't fish anywhere where the depth gets even close to that, but the additional signal range is nice when I want to fish over a different hole than my deeper is in. Because of the small size, the deeper is great for early or late ice mobile fishing. You can fit it in your pocket and walk onto the lake with an ice rod in one hand and a pail in the other. When you start fishing with thick ice, that advantage becomes less pronounced. The deeper has a fully contained battery. When it dies, you need to plug it in to charge it. There are no spare batteries you can swap. The website says that the battery will last six hours under nonstop usage and it will charge in two hours. On average, I'd say with my use, it lasts slightly less than six hours when ice fishing due to the temperatures that the battery is in. I make sure to keep it in a jacket pocket when not in use and still have yet to run out of battery on any morning or evening fishing trip. One thing is for certain, the deeper battery always outlasts my cell phone battery with the screen on full brightness. And for that reason, I always keep a battery bank available for my cell phone. Within the app itself, the deeper has a few features that are more ice fishing friendly. In addition to the flasher, you can now have a split screen showing both a flasher and a 2D sonar view. I always sort of prefer the 2D sonar personally because it gives me a better perspective of jigging rhythm and how a fish reacts to certain movements, but the flasher is preferred by many people who just want to see what's going on in real time. There's also a zoom mode that allows you to watch a vertical flasher, which can isolate any water column range you want to focus on. A hole marker feature allows you to mark GPS waypoints at holes you fished in the past. That comes in handy if you've had, say, an overnight snowstorm that completely covered all of your holes and tip-ups. If there were one viewing mode that I'd like to add to the app, it would be the option for a split screen showing 2D sonar on the left and a zoom 2D sonar on the right. I personally find that combo to be very helpful when fishing in deep water close to bottom. When you fish very close to other people who are using flashers or sonars, you need to be aware of the possible consequences of their frequencies causing interference. Here you can see what the screen looks like when I'm fishing in the same fish house as two other guys who are running Markham units. Here's what the signal looks like when I'm fishing alone. While a bit annoying to look at, the image is still usable in the 2D sonar and even the flasher mode somewhat. However, I think the vertical flasher with zoom becomes a bit unusable with interference present. Here's some of the history that's recorded from a fishing trip on my phone. You can see I'm in about 25 feet of water. This is on a local lake. I'm by myself fishing for crappies, so there's obviously a very clean background. I have the sensitivity set pretty low so that I really can't see my jig unless I uh, give it a jig and you can sometimes see a little flash of it. Otherwise, it's just the fish that I'm seeing. And you can see right now the, the screen is pretty full of them. There's at least, I'd say, four or five fish down there near the bottom. There you can just see I drop my bait down into the muck, and then I slowly pull it back up. It's a technique that I do fairly often to get one of those fish out of the school to hit. And I slowly raise it up, and you can see that one finally took it. And now here you can see I'm on an ice fishing trip up at Lake of the Woods. I'm in the same ice house as two other guys who are also running flashers, so you can see there's definitely some interference on the screen. My sensitivity is a little bit higher here, so you can see my bait. You can also see one fish that's right on the bait, as well as a second fish that's right on the bottom. That one fish is just right on the bait, but kind of dropping down. So I moved my bait a little bit, gave it a couple quick aggressive jigs, and then he hit it. I set the hook, missed him. You can see the fish kind of drop back off, but then he hit it again as soon as I let the bait down. And you can see I'm reeling the fish up here. 
and then about 12 feet below the ice, he popped off. So then still on the same screen here, I let my bait back down. You can see there's still some fish uh, right tight to the bottom. Then I'll swap over to the actual footage of the phone. So you can see the interference is definitely a bigger impact on the flasher and the vertical sonar than it is the 2D sonar, which is still readable. Couple big quick jigs. I'm fishing about five feet off the bottom now, just seeing if I can pull some of those fish up. You can see there's definitely at least two fish down next to the bottom. And here I just lower my jig closer to the fish and then pull it back up, give it another quick jig, and then that causes that fish to hit again. And this time I'm pulling them out of the ice. The biggest comparisons that this unit draws from ice fishermen are with dedicated ice fishing flashers or sonars that are on the market. Advantages to the flashers are that they usually have big rechargeable batteries that can run all day or more and swapped out when dead. Their sonars are very powerful and they have more built-in ice fishing specific features like varying levels of interference rejection and multiple zoom and viewing modes. Some of their downsides are that they're heavier to carry, take up valuable floor space inside an ice house, and the transducer cable can tangle around the line if you're not careful pulling in a fish. The other disadvantage is the cost. You'll pay somewhere from $200 to over $1,000 for a piece of equipment that's primarily just going to be used on the ice. With the deeper, there are no cords to get tangled, and the unit is small and light enough to fit in your pocket. It's also designed to be used throughout the year, which adds a ton of value for those who fish from kayaks or from shore, with the ability now to create bathymetric maps in real time and pull them up to review any time in the future. Since the app is an integral part of the system, you get updates and improvements to the software much more regularly and without added cost. Coming at this from another perspective, you might be an open water angler primarily who wants to try ice fishing without another big investment. Then this starts looking like a pretty good option. Downsides for ice fishing would be the limited battery time, moderate impact from interference, and slightly lower levels of detail and target separation when compared to a high powered flasher, especially when fishing deep water close to bottom. Since there are no cords for the transducer, the unit sits on top of the hole. That means your hole can't have a bunch of slush at the surface or you won't get a good reading. It also means that in very thick ice, say over two feet, you'll need to pay special attention to your holes being drilled vertically instead of at a slight angle. Overall, I was pretty impressed with the updates made to the Deeper Pro Plus. It's certainly very capable as an ice fishing sonar. While I'd like to say it's better or worse than other standard ice fishing flashers on the market, it's sort of an apples to oranges comparison. Features that are advantageous to the deeper make it worse in some categories other flashers excel. And features that make expensive flashers excel also make them worse or even useless in other categories that the deeper excels, particularly when you start to look into open water crossover use. There were even times when I used both a Humminbird Helix 5 and the deeper simultaneously this winter with great success. I would jig over a large open basin for crappies not far from a submerged reef and the deeper going in different holes allowed me to much more easily find and stay on the schools of crappies. As it got closer to the dark, I'd put the deeper in a hole on the transition onto the reef. Once it would start marking fish, I'd grab my walleye rod and start jigging for them during the short bite window. It certainly made my fishing more efficient in that regard. So yeah, I can't really tell you what would be the best option for your style of ice fishing. For my use, it's pretty clear that some ice anglers would be better suited with a traditional flasher, while others would be better off with the deeper. I've been pretty happy so far trying each in different scenarios and even in combined use. I've also been using this Deeper Pro Plus both from shore and from my kayak and we'll be releasing more videos on how it fares in each of those scenarios. If you found this video helpful, please click like, share, and subscribe. Also please leave any questions in the comments down below and I'll be happy to answer.